a few years ago, I came across a product called Texture Paste. It's also no, known as Modeling Paste. I've prepared a painting with the Texture Paste already. Sometimes I work on canvas, but today I'm working on watercolor paper. And here's a photograph that I took of some irises at an iris farm down in Bognor Regis. It's just really given me something to work on. All I've done is, using the Texture Paste, create these very big ridges around the edge of the petals. And I don't know if you can hear just how dry they are. It does take an hour or two for the paste to dry off completely. You do want it burn dry before you start painting with it. I've got some watercolor and some art bars, a bit of mixed media here. The secret to working on top of texture paste, it does sound quite strange. Now that it's bone dry, I'm going to wet it and I'm going to use a very traditional wet into wet technique. Uh, so petal by petal, I'm going to wet the texture paste, pick up the color and just drop it in and allow it to run. And while it's running, pick up a little bit of something else, a little pink. One brush is putting the paint onto the texture paste and the other brush is dry. And the more you dry off the bottom of the, the little petal that you're working on, the more the paint above it runs into that surface. So I'm going to work all the vertical petals first, picking up a little bit of paint off an art bar and dropping that in, and then swinging across onto my palette and picking up a bit of crimson paint, which is the watercolor paint, and dropping that in and then using my paintbrush to dry the base and that's going to pull the color down. I'm going to leave that one because all that paint will run, but I might work on the one on, the, uh, my, on my right. And so wetting that surface, a little bit of this color, touching it, picking up some more color, dropping it in and allowing it to run. It's so actually keeping your brush off the, uh, the paint is half the battle. Now I'm leaving a big gap and wetting this petal here and I'm going to sweep the color up and then pull the color down. It's, it's all about working with the wet into wet technique of watercolor and yet using texture paste to create that wonderful fluted edge and I must say I've had a lot of success with paintings like this. People do realize I've worked with watercolor but they're never quite sure how I created the texture. Now while it's drying I'm going to have a go at this petal in the front really wetting it a tremendous amount um, like that. I'm going to pick up the color from the art bar run it in and run my brush across it and working while it's still wet and allowing the color to run back up into the paint like that. And that's why the, the texture paste has got to be bone dry before you can put these colors on. If you work it while it's wet, the white of the paste blends in with the color that you're trying to put down and it just doesn't work. It makes it all um, opaque and also pastel in color. And you lose the beautiful transparency of watercolor. While it's drying, I can wet the, uh, the petals on the side here and uh, pick up the color once again, drop it in. Two or three brush strokes, not very careful uh, with the brush stroke because I just want the color to run. So you can see I'm using very broad strokes now. I'm just uh, dropping the color in. Uh, while it dries, I'm going to work on the bud and I'm going to make it a little bit more intense in tone because they usually are. Uh, the petals seem to, um, to lighten as they, uh, as they mature and come out. So really picking up the color, quite a deep color. Mixing it in with watercolor, you could use ink tense. I quite often paint with ink. I'm going to change the color slightly and uh, and make this one um, a, a, a deep maroony color. I just want to show you what happens when you paint on it when it's dry. Uh, what happens is it doesn't seem to run into the little crevices that you've created. It's much better to first wet that texture paste surface and then pick up your diluted color. You can use very intense color but just so long as it's diluted enough to run into all those nooks and crannies and you can darken it and it's just beautiful. It really is the way that watercolor works best of all. So these three down here are going to be pinky maroonian color and we'll keep those two at the top 
as the blues. I keep my brush off it. I want to see exactly what it'll do without any help from me. Uh, that's what's so exciting about working with the texture paste. It almost seems to paint itself, which is super. Right, here we go, wetting it. And I'm picking up the color, diluting the color so that you get wet into wet going on. Touch it down, let it run, touch it in. Add some more color to it, maybe a touch of purple to it. And it does that beautiful wet into wet thing. That works so beautifully. When it's dry, I judge the tones and I might go back in and add more darker tones here and there. The top has dried off and so I can now go in and just paint that little bit up at the top that I missed. And the reason I missed it was I didn't want the paint above to run into the paint below. So I wanted that to be completely separated. And so I allowed a gap between them, which I'm now taking out. The watercolour paint has dried now and I do need to go in and increase the darkness here and there but I'm first going to use uh, watercolour pencils and just draw some of the greenery in. Taking some reference from the photographs that I've got and it's just really making sure that the stalks are wide enough to hold the head. That's the big tip that I can pass on really is um, just work out how you're going to put the whole composition together. And because this is watercolour, it is water soluble. So if I make any mistakes, I can just literally lift them out and uh, move them later on. So just a little quick sketch, putting some of these buds together. And then I'm going to try and link them with a few broad leaves here and there and just bring the whole thing together. And by using a water soluble crayon, it, it's just so much easier. So if you do make a mistake, you just lift off. I'm now going to move into paint and I'm going to use a flat brush and a little bit of watercolor paint and I'm diluting some yellow adding some blue to it and then I'm going to use that same very wet into wet technique uh, of painting so almost preparing the surface with a little water like that and then picking up the yellow dropping it in picking up the blue dropping it in and just allowing it to run in the water so it's keeping the same style of painting. And when I get two surfaces getting close to each other, I just use a bit of dry paper in between to stop them running together. And working fairly quickly, these flat brushes are very expressive. They're beautiful to work with. And um, I use them for just about everything. Acrylics, watercolor, even oil painting, all done with uh, a flat brush. And I think the big secret really is Having done a little planning, you can be quite free and just drop the colour in, let it run, drop it in, and just flick it and allow it to run. It's just beautiful the way watercolour works. And I get to work behind here and very carefully just wet some of these surfaces. The other thing I can do, of course, is pick up the paint directly from either the ink tense block or uh, the art bar and just use them exactly the same way and it's getting a little variety of tone and variety of color coming in and uh, just very freely drop these colors in just make sure that everything has a beginning and it joins up otherwise you have um, little bits of leaf and petal suspended mid-air, which doesn't really work. So I'm going to let that dry and work back into the flowers themselves. And this time I'm going to use some watercolour pencils and possibly just go straight in by drawing it in. And the beauty of using these uh, water-soluble pencils is that if you want to soften it off, of course you just lift the colour I work it back into the surface that you want. So just taking a few darks here and there. I can also dip into paint, of course, and just really put the darks and the lights back in. So here and there, just join up that petal. I can take the paint off the, uh, the pencil itself, or I can uh, just run it straight in with the watercolor. And so it's rigging the changes, just putting a few darks in here and there separating that petal from that petal and then 
lifting those colours back out. It is watercolour, so you've got to be a bit careful that it doesn't move. So I'm being very, very light, I'm uh, using a very light touch with it back here. I might have a look at my reference material and decide to do a few of these lines on the front surface of the main iris. Might come back down into the, the buds and just take them a little bit darker in places. And you can spend a lot of time putting in all the details. I'm a bit short on time, so obviously I'm just going to take it to a stage where I'm happy with it and then uh, making sure you've got some tonal changes here and there and just make it dynamic and interesting to look at. And then go back in here and there and just make sure I've got my darks dark enough to make it interesting. I think that'll do. I hope you have a go at all the different techniques that I've shown you. Have a go at with the art bars and the texture paste and the ink tents. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>